Hello, my name is Peter Dell. I'm the author of Woodson IDE, an integrated 8-bit development plugin for Eclipse. It allows you to create uh, your own 8-bit assembler projects, compile and run them. And it, uh, if you wonder what this strange acronym is about, there's a nice explanation in the FAQ of the home tab. But for this recording, I will focus on what is this IDE, how do I install it basically, how can I use it, and what does it look like. So let's start with the surrounding platform. This is Eclipse platform. It's 50 megabyte, no other plugins installed. You don't need Java or anything like that uh, as plugin in advance. All you need is you need to install the Woodson IDE plugin, which is available on my update site. So you just choose to install the software. You see version 1.5.0 is currently out. You see this plugin, what it is, what it supports. You have to accept the uh, GPL. When you press finish, it will warn you that this is unsigned content. Yes, it is. After the restart, the actual installation is completed. As you can see, it starts rather quick because it's simply the platform with one single plugin. What you have pro uh, installed now is the feature that you have an additional preferences section with the assembler settings for each of the supported platforms. So you have the Atari 8-bit, which is the currently most evolved platform. And you have the choice between several compilers. Uh, these compilers are installed separately as files. There's an archive on the website. You can also download the latest version for each uh, compiler here, normally via the, via the website of the corresponding compiler. All you need to do is configure the compiler path for the compile process. Then for running the outcome of the compile process, you normally have an emulator installed. If the emulator registers on the corresponding file extension, there's nothing else you can you have to do. Otherwise, you can configure more specific parameters and paths. We all don't need all that. So, and what is here? Here is basically an empty workspace with an empty folder in which I will start creating my content now. My example will be the most famous effect on the Atari 8-bit computer. The important thing is the extension, because based on that extension, the editor and hence the corresponding compiler is chosen. There may be several editors registered for the same file type, so you can choose them also explicitly. So I start with the command, because this is the most famous effect on Atari. I start with defining equits. So I say sd MACTL, DMA control is at decimal 559. Then we have the background color, which is in the first video chip, and this is the background color. Oh, and look what happened down in this outline section, which was opened up automatically. There is now a definition section, and it enumerates the labels or equals. Uh, with their value and also with the command, so you can describe what it is. We need one more thing. We need the vertical counter. Okay, now we want to actually start coding. There is a built-in content assist functionality. If you press Control Space, you will get a list of all supported uh, compiler directives. Uh, compiler synonyms and build in opcodes, supported opcodes, including um, legal opcodes if this corresponding compiler supports that. So I start with the org statement to define where the corresponding executable shall be compiled to. This is the main part. I start switching off the screen. And I want to simply load the virtual count vertical counter and store it into the background color. Then I say let's loop. And to indicate that the file needs to be executed at a given start address, I say run start. Now 
I'm fairly complete. You say here also the main part as implementation section was added. So here, when I opened this file, I can close it, you see it hides away. And when you open this file, you get this assembler menu, which allows you to open the source folder, where you can see everything in your file system. Sometimes this is very useful. Output folder, we have no output yet. And you can choose to either compile or to compile and run the result. You can also choose to open the compiler help, which is delivered with the compiler and automatically integrated here. So let's do it. Okay. Well, what has happened? Some errors have occurred. You see I have used undefined labels. When I click on these error messages, they automatically navigate to the corresponding error location. You also get an indicator with a tooltip here and for larger projects where you have a long scroll bar, it is also indicated here. I see, oh, I missed the loop. Of course, the loop shall be here. I press compile again. It automatically positions me to the remaining error. Oh, I did not even define the start label. So start label should be here and let's go. And you see, it opens up and it is colorful. This is all you want from your 30-year-old hardware, right? 